believe that Jesus died? Do you believe that he shed his blood? He took your place in death that you may take his place in life. Do you believe that he defeated sin? He defeated Satan? He broke the power of sin. Do you believe that he offers you new life? And if you believe it, have you acknowledged it? If you have not done that, if Jesus comes today, you are going to hellfire. Hallelujah. So before we continue, I'm going to give us five minutes. And I'd like us to pray from the depths of your heart, every one of us, and say, Lord, I commit myself. Commit myself. I want to be sure that on this day, this decision is true in my life. Jesus, Son of God. Pray. I believe in you. I believe in you. I call you my Messiah. Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. Pray from the depths of your heart. I believe that Jesus died. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. Oh, I believe. I believe in life and in death. This becomes my conviction. Jesus, Son of God. I may not believe many things about the Christian faith, but I believe this one. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. With my heart, I believe that Jesus died. Jesus, Jesus paid the price. Jesus I believe the truth of God's word. I believe that Jesus came. He was born of the Virgin Mary. I believe, I believe that he suffered. I believe that he went to the cross. I believe he hung on that cross for me. I believe that he was pierced with those nails for my sins I believe he said it is finished I believe he was buried and he went to hell and collected the keys of death, hell and the grave I believe that on the third day he resurrected I believe that he's alive today and he offers me the gift of righteousness oh and I've received it by faith Jesus, Son of God, the most important decision in your life. When the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder 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 when the road When the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. In two minutes, I'd like you to cry for your family members that you know, you know they are going to hell. Lift your voice and pray. Don't pretend it. Some of us, our kind fathers, are still going to hell. When all is said and done, when all is said and done, 
your degree means nothing your prosperity means nothing when all is said and done when all is said and done there are some of our sisters going to hell brothers our relatives kind cousins well-meaning family members but as it is right now the truth of god's word is that they are going to hell pray for them lord save them save them save them hell is real heaven is real whether you believe it or not jesus is coming please pray for them in one minute i know we've taken time but this is too important what then are we doing save their soul oh god save their soul please pray for your father lord let him not go to hell now that he's alive there is still a chance pray for your drunkard brother lord you have to do something about his salvation pray for your idol worshiping grandparents lord they are kind they love me but they are going to hell save them oh god are you praying let me tell you if this is all we do tonight it is important there is nothing that stops jesus christ from coming this night the gospel of the kingdom is already being preached there is nothing that stops jesus christ from coming tomorrow morning hallelujah the last prayer point before we continue listen look at me i want to say something and i mean it from the depths of my heart there are some of you here the blood of your family members and your friends will be upon your head because you move around you know jesus and you love him but you are afraid and ashamed you don't want stigmatization how can me a fine girl be involved in preaching how can me a bubble all right they are going to die that's the problem it has nothing with you being a preacher and let me tell you the bible tells us that the rich man was in hell and he saw lazarus they communicated you will be able to see your father and your mother they will look at you you will look at your roommates you will look at people you will see them let me tell you the truth and they are going to ask you they will say Femi you saw this thing you didn't insist you even asked me out yet you never preached to me you taught me about prosperity you taught me many of us who are preachers here the blood of many people will be upon our heads we taught about dimensions of revival we taught about divine health Rema, we heal the sick. There were all kinds of demonstrations of the spirit. But they, we did not confirm whether our members are going to make it. We had building projects. Project 10,000. Excellence. There was table. You cut cake. We dress well in suit. But the question is, in the final analysis, are you preaching to anybody? There are some of you, you have never opened your mouth to talk to anybody. You can share about revelation. You can share about marriage. You can give koinonia messages. You are on Facebook. You are on Twitter. You have all kinds of things. God gave you an opportunity. You have recharge card. Let me tell you something. 
in 2000 and was it three or four i used to do something i will never sleep until i send text messages to at least 10 or 15 people talking to them about the lord jesus christ i don't know them i would just be calling numbers at random i think that was when 2003 four that was when they started this gsm thing i would just type in numbers at random and send just type a message about salvation not a condemning message but a sincere message there are some of you you can make tracks you are waiting until the day you become a jew some of us our facebook pages have become platforms for for gossiping and making all kinds of noise yet our loved ones are going to hell you are interested in a relationship with the lady you don't even know whether she's going to heaven or hell all you know is she's fine continue hallelujah and you are there god gave you beauty all kinds of guys are coming you don't want to fall your hand and you never talk to them about jesus christ some of you get up and you allow people you come for going on and you just say i'm going and they say okay and it never occurs to you that if you come for koinonia and the trumpet sounds you will never see them again you have no ministry if souls are not being saved you are not doing ministry i don't care what you are doing our number one assignment is part of our mission statement massive salvation of souls not salvation of souls massive salvation of souls when i see a man that needs to hear about jesus and god grants me the grace i will speak if i cannot speak i will do something what is wrong with you going to the studio i'm going to pay 10 or twenty thousand naira and just do a salvation message you are not the name of any ministry. You say, what is the name of my own ministry? Must you have a ministry? Just go to the studio and do it a 20 minutes presentation of salvation. Or you and your friends contribute two, 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 two thousand. Five or ten people. And just put it as an mp3. We put all kinds of useless things. Um, this is Joshua Selman. I'm about to release my debut track nonsense when there is room to preach the gospel first how many of our gospel songs carry direct salvation messages have you seen, have you discovered the way we are quietly deviating and nobody wants to attack the salvation thing it looks old school right it doesn't look very attractive so i rather push success I'm not against success, brothers and sisters. But I repeat, if Jesus comes, nobody is carrying a khaki out of this realm. Are you, are, are, you, are you aware of that? You are not going to carry any shirt. All of these things, you will drop it behind. Whatever you have in your account is useless. You won't carry your awards. You won't carry your degree. You won't carry your marriage certificate. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. This is what drives me every day. I have dedicated my life, not just for ministry, to turn the hearts of many to righteousness. I don't care how much I'm misunderstood. I don't care how old school I sound when Jesus comes in the final analysis. Some of you are fellowship escorts. Some of you are pastors. When was the last time you truly preached do you know that we graduate people from Bible school and they don't know what the gospel is? They know the keys to wealth. They understand marriage counseling, conflict resolution, how to raise money for church, but they know nothing about winning souls. One more time before I continue. I've, this thing has touched my heart. This thing has touched my heart. Because this is the core, the pivot, the pivot of our Christian experience. 
if God makes you a millionaire and nobody is getting saved as a result of your millions, you will eat your money the day the church is raptured. If God gives you a platform, you have your small fellowship, your group, and you just feel we are only five. I think everybody is born again. Don't make assumptions. That's why I respect Papa E.E. Adeboye. If he holds a meeting between him and his wife, I'm sure he will still make an altar call. No assumption. No assumption. We preach powerful messages. And at the end of it, we don't care whether people are saved or not. One more time. Put a fire in my spirit. Let my mouth not be silent as far as preaching the gospel. Telling people that Jesus died for them and that there is judgment if they don't pay attention. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Some of you truly, when you started out with God, you were very serious as far as soul winning is concerned. You didn't even know that there was anything called anointing. But now you know that there is anointing. I will use everything that God has given me for the gospel. Pray. Prosperity. Grace. The knowledge of graphics. My knowledge of media. My beauty. Sister, pray. Tired of taking men to hell. Now I need to begin to take men to heaven. I will use my voice to sing. And I will keep singing until people come to Jesus Christ. Many of you need to repent on behalf of your groups and ministries. Open your mouth and ask the Lord for forgiveness. You've been doing a lot of activities. But they are not channeled towards soul winning. And you don't care. Open your mouth and pray. And say, Lord, my small fellowship in the village. have not been preaching the gospel. I've been preaching many things. Not the gospel of salvation. Every other gospel is only useless or useful when the gospel of salvation has been preached. Some of us have little groups that we preach to occasionally. Where did you throw your evangelism zeal? It looked old school and you've thrown it for something new. The Bible says, ask for the ancient part. Please pray. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline i'm crying out like the fire again don't let my love grow cold i'm crying out like the fire again i need your day Simply, I'm crying out like the fire again. I just feel God wants us to stop here and press on this issue tonight. Carnal believers and the rest, we have to we'll take on that one. Hallelujah. Whether you are going to kneel down or lie down in the next 10 minutes, I'd like you to write the names of five people that were going to intercede for their salvation. If this is what we do tonight, go ahead and pray. Please cry to God. They must be saved. The natural man I'm crying now. Write it. There is no man that Jesus cannot save. 
for as long as there is life there is hope Shake it about a lot of other 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 I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you Please write it down All about you, Jesus It's all about you It's all about you It's all about you, Jesus Jesus, Jesus, it's all about you, Jesus, Jesus. In the next five minutes, I'd like you to pray in tongues like your life depends on it and say, Lord, these five people must be saved. I must see them in heaven. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Whether you want to kneel down, cry, whatever it is, let there be a cry. They must be born again. Rapakata preske bete gede balararabash. Rakapo shoto pekete le prekete le koto supa. My father will not go to hell. My father will not go to hell. My mother will not go to hell. Pray. Save my husband. Save my wife. Pray. When the trumpet sounds, I must see them in heaven. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. They must be saved. They may be non Christians, but I travel. They must be saved. Revelations 20. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The Lord is imparting a genuine passion for souls. Yeah. Revelations 20. From verse 10. Revelations 20, verse 10. Listen, listen. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever. Next verse. 
And I saw a great white throne. I saw it. I saw it. And he that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no place found for them. Verse 12. I don't know what gospel you have been heard, you have been preaching. I saw the dead, small and great, commissioners and houseboys, presidents and bike men, first class students, and those who did not pass jam. I saw them. I saw them. They stood before God. Every man must stand before God. And the books were open. What books? Your faithfulness in evangelism. Your giving. For those who have taught you that your works of righteousness are not important. Here goes the Bible. The works of men will be tried by fire. And another book was opened which is the book of life. Brothers and sisters, read the remaining part by yourself. One to read. And the dead were judged out of... That means there are things that are written. According to what? Next verse. And the sea gave up all the people who died by sea crash and death and hell delivered all our uncles and aunties and politicians it says and they were judged every man according to their works 14 and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire and the bible says this is the second death let me show you something. Is there another verse? Go ahead. Verse 15. Everyone read. And hold on. And what? Whosoever. At that point, your status will not matter again. At that point, your English, your ordination will not matter your suit will not bail you out he said whosoever was not found written in the book of life there was no story end of discussion cast into the lake of fire whether it is your father whether it is your mother some of you if you don't pray you will watch your mother who gave birth to you you will watch her as the bible says depart from me and you will watch them cry to hell some of you will watch your uncles lift your voice and cry and say lord whatever it will take to stop them from going to this place of torment i cry tonight I love them too much. I love my mother. I love my father. I love my brothers. Yeah. Whosoever's name was not found in the book of life, be it a president, be it a governor, whether you're a first class student, two one student, it will not matter again. It won't matter how many parishes you have. It won't matter how many rema you have. Hey, 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 hey. Whether you are a member of Koinonia or not is irrelevant. I will stand for myself. You will stand for yourself.
and I saw books open and another book was open yeah. 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 intercede for them Lord send angels send angels to my house send angels give them dreams give them encounters with Jesus in their dreams they must be born again When all is said and done When all is said and done This is all that will matter Yeah 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 Revelations 21 Verse 3 a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God verse 4 and God finally brothers and sisters a day will come when all is said and done in this life God will wipe away the tears the tears of mockery some people died out of cancer some died out of hiv some were martyred they were standing for jesus while they were killed the bible says on that day that tears the tears of mockery holy holy the lord will wipe that tears the tears of the pain that you have to go through on account of the gospel that men will not like you some of you would have been married since if you were not standing for God. But because of your faith, the Bible says God will wipe that tears and there shall be no more death, no more obituary, no more pain, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Listen. Listen. It's not enough that you are convinced that you will make heaven. I'm still saying it. We are going to pray. There are some of our loved ones, some of us come from backgrounds that are non-Christians. And some of our loved ones are still there. You are going to pray. And everyone will pray too. Give them divine visitations. Encounters with Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, if Jesus came to die, an encounter is not too much to force any man to give his life to Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Encounters. Appear to them in visions like Saul on his way to Damascus. Sha-da-da-da-da! 
Lord, they will not die. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Rakata pakata badosh. Pray. Change my father. Change my mother. Some of them vow that they will never give their hearts to the Lord. I like you to pray. It can change. Some of them are traditional worshippers. Mention them by name. Mention them by name. Read your prayer request. Mention them by name. Mention them by name. Claim their salvation in the name of Jesus. Some of them are religious people. The truth is they are not born again. They are not born again. Some of them belong to sects that will take them to hell. Occultic sects. Pray for them. Give them an encounter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one of our sisters. She was a member of the worship team. Hallelujah. I'll never forget her touching testimony. Came from a completely non-Christian background. And she decided to give her life to Christ. When she gave her life to Christ, it was war. And gradually, gradually, the Lord started doing his thing in the family. The brother gave his life to Christ. And then I think the mother, and it was remaining the father. And this lady would not give up. I will never forget that night. When she called me crying and jumping around chapel. And said, can you imagine? My father, my father gave his life to Christ. She was jumping. See? There are some hardened people you see. You know that humanly speaking, they will never be born again. Don't try the power of the Holy Spirit. Think of how you were. Some of you think of what God brought you out of. Then you will know that there is no man that God cannot change. There is no man. God has changed occultists. God has changed hardened criminals. Some of you, you know where God brought you out from. If God could change you, if God could change you, we are still going to pray. You are going to say, Lord, put your word in my mouth. Because some of you, it's just, you don't know what to say. But we are going to cry. Lord, let no one's blood be upon my head on that day. Put your word in my mouth. And grant me the boldness to declare the gospel. Go ahead and pray. word in my mouth pray deliver me from shame deliver me from my ego deliver me from embarrassment hey praying from the depths of your heart you must start with your family members before you think of crusades and outreaches start with your family members they must be born again they must be born again
Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are many avenues. Many avenues to turn the hearts of men to righteousness. Number one, the ministry of intercession. There are some of you who pray a lot, but all you are praying is, oh God, give me tea. God, give me bread. Add brew ban on the bread. That's, that's all our prayer. If, if, listen, if the scope of your Christian experience, there's, we'll do it another day. I really wanted to talk about the carnal man. And then we'll, there, there are scriptures that I prepare to touch. We can't, we can't do that. Our time is already gone. The slave to the flesh. That is the man of the flesh that can really not please God. That is another dimension. Maybe we'll consider that next week. Hallelujah. That you, you, you write the names of people and you're just going to fasting for one day and it's not for yourself. How many of you have ever done that? To fast and it's not for yourself. If it's not for me, that's the flesh. That's the flesh. If it's not for my marriage, my, my lifting, my prosperity, Or that you go to prayer and say, Lord, you must save these souls. And you are not just pretending it. One thing that I know is that as much as God grants me grace and breath, no one's blood will be upon my head that day. No one will look at me and say, Joshua Selman, you had access to me, but you never spoke to me about Jesus. Do you know, listen, do you know what the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees said. They said, let his blood be on our head. Who taught them that principle? That the blood of a man can be upon the head of another. And that God would look and say, Ken, I gave you access. I gave you graces. And you ended up building an empire. MOG. They invited you to travel around the world. They gave you water, ushers around. And you never, you were not concerned about the souls of men. There are men who will carry the blood of others on their head. Hallelujah. Oh, I must preach. Necessity is laid upon me. Some of us, the only reason why we cannot, I'm not talking of condemning people, but I'm talking of being passionate enough to trust God. Tell them what Jesus did in your life. There are some of you, you have never invited anybody to church, not once, the way you are like this. You don't care. It's not an issue at all. Yet we sing and we say, Lord, I love you. Yet we sing and we say, someday I'm going home. The Lord is speaking to us tonight. The Bible says the harvest is wide. But the laborers are few. He said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers. When Jesus came, he gave his assignment a business-like attitude. He said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me. Hallelujah. We just came back from a trip. And when I came, I couldn't even rest just to do everything and to come here now. Why all of this thing? Our flight was delayed. There were so many things. These guys have been tired. We left Benin Republic this morning by 5 a.m. in the morning. Headed to the airport. Our flight was shifted. And I can justify and say, Kite, God, you too, you know. But Paul said the love. He said, I, Paul, a bond servant. It looks like I'm in slavery, but no one is forcing me. There is love that constrains me. Little inconveniences for some of us. Little inconveniences for the kingdom. And we complain. 
please don't get me wrong. I'm not against comfort. But I'm telling you, if it is because you want to be comfortable that you allow souls to die and you don't make spiritual progress, their blood will be on your head. Tomorrow morning, we're up teaching school of ministry students from there. We're headed to Zamfara. Coming back Monday morning straight into the counseling session. Why am I doing all this? Am I stupid or I don't know where a retreat center is? That I can just go and lie down and say, let me rest. What drives you, my brothers and my sisters? Please don't say you are a ministry. No. What is it that when you get up in the morning, truly, please take seriously what I'm saying. What drives you? What drives you? Power or fame? What drives your Christian experience? There are some of you, those around you, it's not like they are hardened. Nobody has preached to them. They've been coming to church. You know they are not born again. You know they are not born again. Religion is not being born again. If they are not saved, they are not saved. Period. It's time to talk to them and tell them, I, I want to talk to you. Is it too much to pay and invite them to a restaurant and talk to them about Jesus Christ? Can your 500 naira not go for the gospel? Will it kill you? Will it kill you? What is wrong with three or four of you coming and just praying for three days, just praying and fasting, no group, no ministry, no nothing, just to pray for souls genuinely, ask people to submit the names of their unsaved ones and pray after three days, that's all. Jesus said, if you do this to the least of my brethren. See, let me tell you, the day Jesus comes, we are going to be surprised. Because those you think are the greatest in the kingdom, you will be shocked to find out that they are not the greatest. Some of us, the men of God that you think will be the greatest, you will be surprised that some of us will have just barely made heaven. Whereas there are people whose entire life, they don't have revelation, they don't have any rema. Nobody's inviting them for any ministration. But their heart in life and in death has been committed towards the gospel. There are classmates of ours that have never heard about Jesus Christ. We are ashamed. Sometimes when I pass through ABU campus, I look at the campus and I nod my head. Things have changed. Things have changed. The fire. Many of us are afraid to talk to people about Jesus. Okay, agree that you cannot go for all the crusades and the rest. What of your family members? You grew up knowing your father drinking and smoking and bowing to a God. Have you ever said, Daddy, there's something I want to discuss with you. Say, my father that I know, as if you don't know the Holy Spirit too. What if I talk to him and he insults me? Is that the reason why you will not talk? What if I talk to him and he stops giving me uh, pocket money? What if I tell the brother that this relationship is not born again and let me talk to him about Jesus Christ. Won't it cost me the relationship? I want to marry. Okay, marry. There are some of us as you are looking at me right now. Even those you are in a relationship with are unbelievers. They are going to hell. You don't care. Who is he? He's a nice guy. Is he born again? And please, everybody is a sinner. If he's a sinner, he's a sinner. Your priority is not love. Your priority is salvation. Please hear what I'm saying. Because on that day, the Lord is going to ask you. Praise the Lord. One last prayer point. Lord, Whatever I can do at this level to contribute to the advancement of the kingdom and soul winning, reveal it to me. Whatever I can do, if you can't preach, you can sow seeds. Please pray. Everybody must do something. What can I do for my family? 
Do I need to organize a get together? Do I need to celebrate my father's birthday for him so that he will be saved? What can I do at this level? Do I need to buy a card? Do I need to write an article for my family members? Do I need to produce tracts? What can I do at this level? Don't say I cannot do anything. With the grace you have, there's something you can do. Please pray. Lord, you gave me a voice. I can sing with it. You gave me wisdom. I can use that as a platform. Lord, you bless me with finances. I can release my wealth for the kingdom. Lord, you gave me a car. My car can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a barbing saloon. It can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a restaurant. It can be used for the kingdom. Reveal to me what I can do at this level. It may not be much, but let me contribute. There's something I can do. I can pray. I can preach. I can finance the kingdom. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I can go on my knees and beg you. Don't make this just an emotional thing. It's easy to just feel emotional and just say, wow, because I spoke about hellfire and rapture and books. It's easy for you to be threatened and then just carry the euphoria for one or two days and it dies back. Take this as a message God is giving you. No matter what you have done in ministry, if souls are not being saved, you are wasting God's time. Hallelujah. Please rise up and lift. If you wrote your prayer, your request, if it's in a book, just lift it up. I want to pray on it. Listen. You are the first agent that will follow up these people. Don't just pray for an anonymous man of God to evolve from anywhere. You are the man of God that God is authorizing tonight to start. Don't fear their faces. I'm not saying you should go and do stupid things without zeal. Or with zeal and without knowledge. Just jump into people's houses and inconvenience them start with your family members your family members will not kill you at least you can start from there father we repent in any way we have trivialized the issue of soul winning and lord we know that this is in your heart and you decided to move us this direction We want your heartbeat to become our heartbeat. We want your cry to become our cry. We want your passion to become our passion. Put a piece of your desire for souls in our hearts. And let it be a fire that nothing in this life can quench. Oh, we desire you. We desire you. Put that passion. Lord, I stretch my hands towards these names.
there are so many people who are going to hell whose names are written some of them are fathers some are mothers lord in the name of jesus we agree as a family of faith that beginning from tonight let there be strange angelic visitations strange angelic visitation force them to go for crusades may they go for meetings may they encounter men and women of god and lord we pray especially for those who are not of the christian faith lord you know that humanly speaking their minds are made up but in the name of jesus christ i pray angelic visitations encounters of jesus christ as they sleep they will see his face as they sleep they will see his face in the name of jesus christ as they sleep they will see the cross they will see the cross it will follow them everywhere they go we ransom their souls from the pit of hell lord we will not stand in heaven and watch our loved ones enter that wide gate of hell we will stand and we will rejoice put a passion in us to win souls let it not just be a religious evangelical thing lord remind us that if we do not win these souls and we let them die that their blood will be upon our heads i pray for everyone i kill timidity from your life whatever makes you ashamed of the gospel i don't care what it is whether your inability to communicate well your poor background complex that you have about yourself that 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 limitation is swallowed up tonight in the name of jesus may my god give you utterance may my god give you utterance may my god give you confidence in the name of jesus christ and i pray that you will not win souls and miss heaven yourself i pray for everyone that the same way we are gathered in the earth like this that is how we will see ourselves on that day we will see ourselves and know ourselves therefore i pray any manner of life represented here listen to me any manner of life that the devil is deceiving anyone into and making it look like it does not matter tonight that power of sin is broken over your life every association every wrong thing that can jeopardize your eternal destiny in the name of jesus christ receive grace to say no to every appearance of evil receive no to receive grace to say no to wicked and ungodly relationships receive grace to cut away from people who do not love god nor value his ways in the name of jesus christ and where you need to stand alone receive courage to stand alone where they mock you and say all kinds of things i release grace for you to still stand i pray for you from the depths of my heart that every weight every habit every attitude you know that can destroy your christian experience and rob you of the opportunity i don't care what it is and how long it has been in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray that that life of pretense dies tonight and i pray for those of you who have been doing things both great and small for the kingdom grace to continue i pray specifically for all the workers in this house i want you to know that your contributions 
to advancing the kingdom, the worship department, the ushers. One day, you will see this record in heaven. And the Lord will say, this is what you did on earth for my kingdom. And for those of us who are not serious with the house of God, not the things of God, we are just careless. There is no kind of commitment that you have. You don't give for, in the house of God. You don't pray. You don't support the cause of the kingdom. I pray tonight that God will speak to you. Yeah. And that for the first time for some of us, you will say enough of lukewarm Christianity. It's time to plunge in and commit myself truly. In the name of Jesus.